Father in heaven, we are thankful today for your blessings. Great is your faithfulness towards us. You have allowed us to see one more day. And may today we surrender all to you. I pray that you will educate us, provide for us, protect us in these times of crises. Encourage us, your people. Forgive us of our sins, we pray. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. Greetings, salutations. Welcome to this Midday Power Surge, Wednesday, March 9th, 2022. This is your spiritual oasis on this pilgrim journey. Safe to serve international, first-time viewers, welcome one, welcome all to this Midday Power Surge. Beloved, we have a lot to cover today, and I want you all to pay attention to this all-important segment for this Midday Power Surge. We're going to be looking at current events as they are fulfilling prophecies from the scriptures, as well as what God's people should be doing in these last days. We're told, as Christ was giving, the parable regarding the wedding feast, the ten virgins, an actual wedding was uh, taking place. Many times when Christ spoke grand truths, he was relating to what which was transpiring currently. And this is what we're going to address today. The Bible says in Proverbs 22 and verse number 3, A prudent man, do you want to be found as a prudent person? A prudent man foreseeth the evil and hideth himself. But the simple pass on and are punished. And the same principle is found in Proverbs 27 and verse number 12. With that in mind, let's take a look at the conflict, the battle, the combat that's transpiring now in the Ukraine and see what God is saying to us as Bible-believing Christians, primarily as SDA people. Look at this, brothers and sisters. Ukraine bans all male citizens ages 18 to 60 from leaving the country. What's the age group, my friends? From 18 to 60. And when I saw that, my mind went to the Bible to see if there was uh, something similar in Scripture. And I found in Numbers chapter 1, verse number 2, Three, verse number 20, verse number 22 to verse number 24, all of chapter 1 of Numbers. The Bible tells us that a youth, may I add, a male, had to be 20 years old and upward in order to join the army of the Lord. And of course, that time, it was a theocracy. Today, we're not under a theocracy. So please do not stretch, hmm. misinterpret Numbers 1 and apply it to today. May I move on? Take a look at this, brothers and sisters. Why banning men from leaving Ukraine violates their human rights. Now, friends, I'm not going to spend time on that today. That's for another time. I'm simply saying this. The war that is now transpiring in the Ukraine. Many individuals were actually saying it was simply rumor of war to come. But the rumor of war has now become a reality. From rumor to reality. From rumor to reality. All right. If you know hind hindsight, if you knew that this war was coming in the Ukraine, it would be a reality. And also that people would die. Millions would become refugees. How would you have lived up until the war broke out? In the context of missionary work. In the context of evangelism. What would you have said to your neighbor? Knowing this would have been possibly the final time. You would have seen your neighbor, your co-worker, your classmate, your family member. Brothers and sisters, that is a reality. Do we know when something similar 
what transpired in America, the Caribbean, in South America, in Canada, in Africa. You get the point. In Australia, we don't know. We don't know. We don't know. Europe, Asia, we don't know. So how are we to live today? All right, let me move on. Let me move on. It says, conscripts of all ages head to battle expressing outrage at Putin invasion. What does conscript mean? Does anyone know? Anyone who is live with us? What does conscript mean, my friends? Conscription is the mandatory enlistment of people in a national service, most often a military service. Pause right there because where we're heading today is simply this. What should be the duties of Seventh-day Adventist Christians in time of combat, in time of battle, in time of war? What should be your duties? Stay tuned. Get back here, brothers and sisters. Bottom section, underline red. Conscription is controversial for a range of reasons, including conscientious objection to military engagement on religious grounds. Don't you forget that, brothers and sisters. All right. Now, notice, notice, it says, traveling in combat zone, what are we to do? Stay in groups, carry less, identify as non-combatant. All right, brothers and sisters, how much more should I share? Again, take a look at it, brothers and sisters. As it is in the natural, so it should be in the spiritual. What if this war spreads to America? or a similar war, what would Seventh-day Adventists do if there is a mandate for all men to enlist in the war? What would you do? Have you ever thought about that? Those of you who are alive, have you ever thought about that, brothers and sisters? What would you do right now? Would you know what to do? Or would you then have to go and read up in the books, the Bible, Testimonies for the Church, Volume 1, and other books. What would you do? Well, brothers and sisters, I'm going to share with you some points here. Should we be combatants? Those of you who are alive, talk to me. Should we be combatants in a secular war? Should we be non-combatants in a secular war? Should we be conscientious objectors? Should we be assisting in the hospitals to care for the sick, the wounded, the injured, the dying? What should be our work, brothers and sisters? Should it be medical? Should it be spiritual? What should be our work? All right, let's take a look now at the councils. It's more than councils, my friend. <laughs> that God gave through Ellen White to give to the SDA people during the great civil war in the 1800s. Brothers and sisters, take a look at this. It's clear, brothers and sisters. There it is. Take a look at this. Watch carefully. It says, I was shown that God's people, who are his peculiar treasure, cannot engage, cannot engage in this perplexing war for it is opposed to every principle of their faith. In the army, they cannot obey the truth and at the same time obey the requirements of their officers. There would be a continual violation of conscience. Then it goes on, worldly men are governed by worldly principles. They can appreciate no other. But God's people cannot be governed by these motives. Listen, friends, the 10 precepts of Jehovah, the 10 precepts of Jehovah are the foundation of all righteous and good laws. Those who love God's commandments will conform to every good law of the land. But if the requirements of the rulers are such as conflict with the laws of God, the only question to be settled is, Shall we obey God or shall we obey man? Brothers and sisters, brothers and sisters, in a time of battle, a time of secular war, mm -mm. God's people cannot become combatants. There it is, brothers and sisters. 
to do so, we're told, Bible and Spirit of Prophecy, you'd violate the fourth commandment. You think they are going to say, let there be a cessation of war from Friday sunset to Saturday sunset? Wake up, brothers and sisters. And what says the sixth commandment? All right, I'm going somewhere with this. Now, in the time of the Civil War, there were men among the SDA community who had the wrong sentiment, the wrong words, the wrong actions in regards to the war. And even though they were taking the right stance, they had a draconian spirit. Do you know what they said? We will not side with these rebels and become combatants. We will refuse the draft. That's what they said. Listen to this, brothers and sisters. I saw that those who have been forward hmm, to talk so decidedly about refusing to obey a draft, hmm, a draft, military, uh, a, a draft, do not understand what they are talking about. Should they really be drafted and refusing to obey, be threatened with imprisonment, torture, or death, they would shrink and then find that they had not prepared themselves for such an emergency. They would not endure the trial of their faith. What they thought to be faith was only fanatical presumption. Those who feel that in the fear of God, they cannot, watch this, blue words, those who feel that in the fear of God, they cannot conscientiously Engage in this war will be very quiet. Read the rest of that. All right, friends. But here's the point. You see the principle that the SDA Bible-believing Christians should be conscientious objectors in secular war. That's what it says. They cannot conscientiously engage in this war. Brothers and sisters, yes, we can be volunteers. Yes, we can serve as medical assistants, praying with individuals. Let's move on. I have a lot to cover. It was necessary, watch carefully, it was necessary that something be said. The attention of many was turned to Sabbath keepers because Sabbath keepers manifested no greater interest in the war and did not volunteer. Pause right there. So at first, Seventh-day Adventists refused to volunteer in the war to assist. There is a stark difference between volunteering and being forced. You get that point, friends. God is laying out now the duties of SDA people in a time of war. Should I read on, friends? So we can volunteer. But how? Let's read on. Again, uh, third sentence, red words. In some places, they were looked upon as sympathizing with the rebellion. Hmm. The time had come for our true sentiment in relation to slavery and the rebellion to be made known. Pause right there once more. In other words, the threat of war, the civil war, brought Seventh-day Adventist Christians to the forefront, to prominence. How are you going to respond? How are you going to react? I'm telling you, friends. There are going to be wars in these last days, even secular wars. And these wars will bring SDA people into prominence. So what should be our duties? I'm going somewhere. Watch carefully. Do you want some more? Let me read on. Blue words. There was need of moving with wisdom to turn away the suspicions excited against Sabbath keepers. We should act with great caution. If it be possible, as much as lieth in you, live peaceably with all men. We can obey this admonition from Scripture and not sacrifice one principle of our faith. Satan and his host are at war with commandment keepers and will work to bring them into trying positions. They should not, by lack of discretion, Bring themselves there. Don't you forget that, brothers and sisters. Don't you forget that. And notice, 
These are the writings from Ellen White. What words did her husband, James White, put in print? Are you ready for this, my friends? James White put in print as a denomination. Seventh-day Adventists are non-combatants. Now, how would this apply for SDA families trying or and or have entered into secular wars as combatants? We have left the faith. Get back here. Ready for this? Watch. This is James White speaking, writing red words on top as a denomination of non-combatants. There it is. Seventh-day Adventists should give thanks to God for the provision made by government for the exemption of non-combatants from bearing carnal weapons. Mm -hmm. Blue words. And beside this, we recommend the second Sabbath in each month be especially set aside to fasting and prayer in view of the present terrible war and the peculiar relations which non-combatants sustain to the government that they may still enjoy liberty of conscience and lead quiet and peaceable lives in all goodness and honesty. What year was this written? 1865, J.W. signed it, Review and Herald. James White, there it is, brothers and sisters. But now, I want to give you some homework, brothers and sisters. Now, notice how many, how many of you are familiar now with the actual public stance of the Seventh-day Adventist leadership in this time period of 1865. Take a look at the published statement, friends. Here it is. I'm going somewhere with this. It says, you could read the, the top paragraph, the top words and sentences. Let me begin with the red words. It, it states, while we, Seventh-day Adventists, while we, Thus cheerfully render to Caesar the things which the scriptures show to be his, we are compelled to decline all participation in acts of war and bloodshed as being inconsistent with the duties, duties enjoined upon us by our divine master toward our enemies, and toward all mankind, Seventh-day Adventist in time of war, Review and Herald, 1865. There it is, brothers and sisters. Oh, let me give you homework. Are you ready for homework, my friends? However, what was the stance of the General Conference during World War I? 1914 through 1918, what was, what was their stance? especially on the continent of Europe. Hmm. What was their stance? In the face of a threat of war, did the SDA leaders, specifically in Europe, hmm, encourage, persuade its members to become combatants in the secular war or non-combatants? That's your homework. Ah, friends, that's your homework. God does not want indolent thinkers and people within his ranks. What was it? I'll give you a hint. You'll be shocked and surprised that there was a great marked deviation from what we have just covered. I just gave you the answer. But please do some research. Number two, watch carefully. So in the face of a threat of war, the SDA leaders persuaded its members... To become combatants? Second witness. In the face of the threat of a pandemic, Pestilence 19, the same SDA leaders persuaded its members to receive Caesar's panacea, Babylon's magic bullet. Let's flip it now. Application. In the face of a climate crisis. Ah, you see where I'm going now. What should we expect? Not all, but from many of the SDA leaders. Are they going to encourage, persuade their members to worship on Sunday or to, in, or to, 
observe and stand firm to God's seventh day Sabbath in the face of threaten, threats, imprisonment, persecution, prosecution, even martyrdom. What will be their stance? All right, brothers and sisters. That's the homework. Now, I'm going to go through the comments, all right, and respond to your comments later on, just as I did, what, two days ago, when class was in session. I crave your responses. May I move on now? Okay, friends. In the time of this war going on in the Ukraine, the, uh, I think it's called the, um, it's a poll, let me get that. It's called the Quinnipiac poll. Stated that nearly, watch carefully, 60% of Democrats say they would not fight if America was invaded. March 8, 2022. Look at that, my friends. Look at that. Isn't that sad? The Quinnipiac poll states that. Let's move on. Notice, more Republicans than Democrats would stay and fight if what happened in Ukraine occurred in the United States of America. Look at that, brothers and sisters. I'll give you a third. Majority of Republicans and independents would fight for America if invaded. And brothers and sisters, when I read that in prayer, my mind went to the spiritual application. What should God's faithful people do god's sentinels do god's faithful preachers ministers do in a time not in a secular war i'm making a quick transition now leaving the secular the spiritual war now revelation 12 verse 17 the spiritual war even though i'm still going to use the secular war to make some startling applications for us in a spiritual sense look at that brothers and sisters it says 60 percent of democrats would flee i wonder why they would flee who would they flee flee from you mean that they would abandon their post that they would leave their own people huh. in other words they're all about votes power position can you see that my friends Yet others said we would stand and fight the secular war. I'm not condoning that. You get the point. Likewise, in the spiritual war, the Bible tells us that many of God's professed pastors, teachers, administrators, evangelists, they are merely hirelings. In a time of crisis, spiritual war, they will also flee, flee from the sheep. And the sheep will be destroyed by the wolves. John chapter 10, verse number 11. Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep. But he that is an hireling and not the shepherd, whose own the sheep are not, seeth the wolf coming and leaveth the sheep and fleeth. And the wolf catcheth them and scattereth the sheep. The hireling fleeth because he is an hireling and careth not for the sheep. That's why he flees, brothers and sisters. A hireling is simply a person doing duties just to receive compensation, just to receive a reward, just to receive money, preaching. Teaching just for money. Look at this, brothers and sisters. How many of you are aware of this statement here? Look at this. Spread of prophecy. It says, uh, we are on the earth as combatants. Watch that, brothers and sisters. We are what? We are combatants, not in a secular war. We are on the earth as combatants. Yes, friends. This is not the time or place for us to be negligent indifferent or cureless we have a heaven to win and a hell to shun there is frequently presented to me a scene of conflict and of determined opposition how can it be otherwise 
when we are in an enemy's country. You could read the blue words. We are on the earth. The earth as combatants, brothers and sisters. Are those points clear? Yes. Combatants. And the Bible tells us, and the spirit of prophecy. Let me give this one to you. The Bible tells us in the book of Isaiah, chapter 56, not only are they hirelings, professed SDA preachers, teachers, administrators, flee from their presence, don't support them. No, don't, don't do it, brothers and sisters. Not only are they hirelings, the Bible says that they are greedy dogs. Verse 10 through verse 12 of Isaiah 56. They are greedy dogs, loving to slumber, and they are dumb dogs that cannot bark. Look at this. It says, if God abhors one sin above another, of which his people are guilty, it is doing nothing in the case of an emergency war. Indifference and neutrality in a religious crisis, oh yes, is regarded of God as a grievous crime and equal to the very worst type of hostility against God. Look at that, brothers and sisters. And right now, I'm simply going to share with you just some recent happenings to confirm we are in a spiritual war. We are God's spiritual combatants, watchmen on the walls of Zion. Look at that, friends. We covered this yesterday with evangelist Andy Roman. Yesterday's midday power surge. Yes, my friend, rock music. It was called, by the way, the battle, the battle of the bands. That's it, brothers and sisters. That's loud. I know. Yes. Shocking the senses. Apostasy. Move on from that, brothers and sisters. I'm telling you, many professed preachers, they would talk about some sins in the world, but the gross apostasies abominations among us they're silent they're greedy dogs they're dumb dogs they're hirelings yes they're on facebook instagram youtube videos they preach in the pulpits they want to secure their retirement check the next invitation to speak at this youth congress this camp meeting they are greedy and dumb dogs brothers and sisters and they say, but Sister White says, be careful how you speak about the sins. The Bible says in 1 Timothy chapter 5 and verse 20, public sins demand public rebuke. It's not Matthew 18, 15. Oh no. What about this, my friends? What about this? The dumb dogs, hirelings, greedy dogs. They're no different than those Democrats who say that they would flee. And neither do I support Republicans. Come back here. There it is, my friends. Dumb dogs. The church of the pink pews. Todd Leonard promoting. Huh? Gay members in the choir. Teaching Sabbath school. Hmm? Cheering church committee. Preaching from the pulpit. What? And being hired by conference administrators. You expect us to be quiet? My friends, we're told in volume 9 and page 23, the world is watching Seventh-day Adventists. It knows something of our profession of faith and high standards. And when it sees those not living up to their faith, the world points to us with scorn. They must be on record. Truth, Protestants, the great protest against these hirelings, Greedy dogs and dumb dogs. That's it, friends. And he had the boldness to say, they won't fire me. They won't terminate my contract. Why? They support what we're doing. Glendale City, SDA Church, brothers and sisters. Look at that right there. You can pause the video and read the apostasy. All right. Gay elder. What's going on here? And everybody knows it. 
Not only one church, other churches. What's going on? Loma Linda, what's going on? Hirelings, brothers and sisters. PUC promoting Adam and Steve. What's going on among us? Sports. Competition. Hmm? Be sure your sins will find you out, Oakwood. Be sure. Publicly. You were shown to be bearing false witness. Signing the contract well knowing you had to play sports on the Sabbath. During Sabbath hours. And now you want to change the situation to favor yourself. Apostasy, brothers and sisters. We are told in volume 5, page 136. Watch carefully. When the religion of Christ is most held in contempt, his laws is the most despised, then should our zeal be the warmest, and our courage and firmness the most unflinching to stand in defense of truth and righteousness when the majority forsake us to fight the battles of the Lord, to fight the battles of the Lord when the majority forsake us, to fight the battles of, that's the remnant, to fight the battles of the Lord when the majority forsake us. One more time, to fight the battles of the Lord when champions are few, when champions are few, when they flee as hirelings from the sheep. When champions are few, this will be our test. Watch now at this time, March 9, 2022. At this time, we must gather warmth from the coldness of others, courage from their cowardice, and loyalty from their treason. 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 As in the secular, military, so in the spiritual Treason in high places. The nation will be on the side of the great rebel leader. Nation, let me add to that. The denomination will be on the side of the great rebel leader. I digress. What shall I more say? Beloved, no song. Let's close right here. By God's grace, remember friends, the protest must continue. I don't know what some people believe. We're just getting started by God's grace. It's time to bring about revival, reformation, repentance among this community and to evangelize aggressively the world before it is too late. I hope you were blessed. Hope you were educated. Hope you were stirred up to your core. Yes, friends, let's be found faithful in these last days. By God's grace, see you tomorrow at 12.30 p.m. Eastern Time for Midday Power Surge. God bless.